This is VOA News. Reporting by remote, I'm David Byrd. The U.S. Justice Department has charged three North Korean computer programmers in a broad range of global hacks, including a destructive attack that targeted an American movie studio and an extortion scheme aimed at attempting to steal more than $1.3 billion from banks and other financial institutions. John Demers is an assistant attorney general for national security. The DPRK's malicious activities are a global problem, requiring global awareness condemnation, and cooperative disruption. With this indictment and related disruptions, the United States continues to do its part. According to the indictment, the hackers were part of a conspiracy that attempted to steal more than $1.3 billion in money and cryptocurrency from banks and companies, unleashed a sweeping ransomware campaign, and targeted Sony Pictures Entertainment in 2014 over the Hollywood movie The Interview, which depicted the assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Federal agents have seized more than 10 million fake 3M brand N95 masks in recent weeks. AP's Sagar Megani reports. Investigators have been looking into counterfeits sold in at least five states to hospitals, medical facilities, and government agencies. The fakes are not tested to see if they meet strict N95 standards, and users may have a false sense of security. Because they are of no utility whatsoever. Homeland Security Secretary Ali Mayorkas says criminals are looking to make a buck by preying on pandemic fears. Investigators say they've also seen a jump in phony websites purporting to sell vaccines and fake medicine produced overseas. Sagar Magani, Washington. Be sure to log on to our website, voanews.com. This is VOA News. Security officers have fired shots at protesters in Mandalay as widespread demonstrations against the military coup in Myanmar continue. Reuters' Libby Hogan has more. With bonnets up and hazard lights flashing, cars appear to be broken down across Myanmar's largest city of Yangon on Wednesday. It was the latest creative protest against the military coup, from taxi drivers, commuters and even public transportation employees. Their aim was to block military and police from moving in on protesters. Tens of thousands of demonstrators flooded the streets of Yangon and were joined by celebrities and veteran activists. That's Reuters' Libby Hogan. Japan's first coronavirus shots have been given to healthcare workers, beginning a vaccination campaign considered crucial to holding the already delayed Tokyo Olympics. AP's Charles de la Desma reports. The massive drive comes after the government gave its belated first approval on Sunday for shots developed and supplied by Pfizer, which had been used in many countries since December. But progress the campaign might make is uncertain in a country where people are often reluctant to take vaccines due to worries of side effects. Another complication is that supplies of imported vaccines are a major concern because of supply shortages and restrictions in Europe where many are manufactured. I'm Charles Duladesma. A surge in health care and energy prices resulted in the biggest jump in wholesale prices in a dozen years. AP's Mike Hempen has details. The Labor Department says the producer price index, which measures inflation pressures before they reach consumers, increased by 1.3 percent in January. That's the biggest one-month gain since 2009. That increase reflected a roughly 1 percent rise in health care services and a 5 percent jump in energy prices. Analysts now think inflation is likely to rise this year after more than a decade below the federal reserves 2% target for annual price increases. An uptick in inflation would signal a fuller reopening of the economy. Mike Hemp in Washington. Rush Limbaugh, the talk radio host who ripped into liberals and laid waste to political correctness with a merry brand of malice that made him one of the most powerful voices on the American right, died Wednesday of lung cancer. He was 70. He called himself an entertainer, But his rants during his three-hour weekly radio show broadcast on nearly 600 U.S. stations influenced the rightward push of conservatism and the rise of Donald Trump. You can find more on our website, voanews.com. Reporting by remote, I'm David Byrd, VOA News.